What's up guys, welcome to Supercars of London and the McLaren 570S. If you haven't seen yesterday's video of the collection and first drive, then click the link in the description to check out what my first thoughts were of driving this beast. Now before yesterday, I'd only ever had passenger rides in the McLaren and I didn't really know too much about them. However, the 570S as marketed by McLaren as the baby sports series, I wanted to do a little bit more research and make this video of some of the things that you didn't know about this car, the McLaren. 570s. Okay, so first thing is the McLaren design, and you may have seen over the evolution from the 12C to the P1 to the 650S to this that there are a lot of hidden McLaren logos. So everyone knows the McLaren logos as a bit of a, a, a fat Nike swoosh, as you might say. I've counted over 25 McLaren logos on this car, including the badge. Now here, we've got one right here, which is the headlights. But then, we've got another one that curves around there. So there's two on each side. We've got four on each wheel. We've got so many in the inside of the car. The tail lights of the McLaren logo. Everything about this car is a McLaren logo. So the next point is one of the first things you will have known about all of McLarens, that they are turbocharged. And this is the first car that I have driven that is turbocharged, but you actually feel the turbos kick in. This car, when you put your foot down, woo, you just, all of a sudden, midway through the range, take off into a new dimension. The wheels struggle to get traction, and this car just turns into an just the most ridiculous road-going go-kart that I've ever driven. Even though there are a lot of McLaren hidden logos in the design of this car, it is all designed to cut through air as efficiently as possible, make this car as fast as possible for the McLaren Sports Series. And that includes a few hidden holes that you weren't expecting. One here, one in here, and even one through the door. <laughs> now the baby McLaren is actually the best sounding McLaren. The 12C came out, obviously that was the first real sort of test the waters for McLaren. Then the P1 came out and it just sounded like a 12C with bigger turbos. Then the 650 came out with a sports exhaust, sounded a little bit better. However, this car does sound really quite cool. Let's go. Even though McLaren market this car as a sports car, this car has got supercar performance, there's no doubt about it. 0 to 62 in the McLaren 570S is 3.2 seconds. Now if you want to compare some of the McLaren sports car stats against some of the first hypercars ever to be created, let's go back to 2004 where Mercedes and McLaren combined together to create the SLR. 0 to 60 on that car is 3.5 seconds. This car is faster than an SLR McLaren. Now I could carry on here with the SLR's rival, the Porsche Carrera GT, now for sale second hand for over £600,000. It's the same 0 to 60, 3.5 seconds to 60 miles an hour in a Porsche Carrera GT. And I know that it's a manual gearbox and I know that car really struggles for traction, but still, this car, the McLaren sports car, is faster than an SLR and a Porsche Carrera GT. And what about a Zonda, the first Zonda C12S, one of the most craziest hypercars to come out ever? 3.7 seconds, not to 60. This car is faster than all of those hypercars that are well over half a million quid. This car costs 140 grand. And if we're gonna talk about price, McLaren, this car starts at 143,000 pounds. So compared to those cars that I was just comparing it to, this car is cheap as chips. However, even though it's 143,000 pounds, once you start putting optional extras on this car, it can get a little pricey. If you want carbon on the exterior, if you want the 10 sat surround sounds, 10 speakers surround sound, it is gonna start creeping over the 170,000 pounds and into the 488 GTB territory from Ferrari. So even though this car starts at 140,000 pounds, it's pretty much 
impossible that you're going to see a McLaren 570S on the road that cost £143,000. However, they do do a detuned version of this car, the 540C, which has got a detuned engine from this car, and the exterior looks pretty much exactly the same. So if you want to save a few pounds, buy a 540C and then retune it back up to the 570 engine power. Even though this is the baby McLaren, everyone calls it the baby Mac, it is still quite big. It's even bigger than the 650S. The dimensions of this car, the width, the height, the length of it, is the same size, if not a tiny little bit bigger than the McLaren 650S, which is its, its daddy. So when you're driving past parked cars, you really have to think about how wide the car is. And even though this car feels like a tiny little go-kart as you're driving it, it is still quite big. So there are some of the points that make the 570S more than just a sports car that McLaren make it out to be. Don't get me wrong, this car is absolutely fantastic and what McLaren are able to achieve with their baby McLaren is just unbelievable. But I'm actually giving it so much credit because it is so much more than what McLaren make it out to be. Even though the 650S, the 12C, the P1, this car is usable every single day it's as fast as it needs to be on public roads. It is as much fun as you could possibly ask for in a road car. This car is utterly insane. <laughs> Let's just let that roll past. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video with the bright orange McLaren 570S that turns heads everywhere you go. And um, I'd just like to say thank you for watching and thank you for supporting. Please give it a thumbs up if you haven't already and click subscribe because there's going to be a lot more exciting stuff coming very soon to Supercars of London. So for now, that is it. Thank you for watching guys and I will see you soon.